Boomers. An interesting specimen to be sure. When they aren't busy ruining the economy and making it impossible to buy a house, they spend their free time wandering the post-apocalyptic wasteland looking for innocent survivors to puke their bad takes onto. The fire will help me out here. I'm telling you, work hard now, focus on your job, and then when you're old, you can retire, relax, and travel the world. Okay, never mind, they didn't because they camouflaged themselves in the fire. Gathering a Twitter hate mob from seemingly nowhere of hundreds of brainless zombies parroting their parents' beliefs. In normal gameplay, these pesky overweight overlords can slow the pace of the game to a crawl. They vomit on the player, covering their screen in early 2000s Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards. This reduced visibility, combined with the endless hordes of common infected that follow, can be annoying, but with a skilled group of players, it's only a nuisance. Boomers, along with spitters, are some of the best special infected that can spawn. He's, he's dead! He's dead! We got him! With some good management, you can stop them from doing anything at all and really astute players will even opt to not kill them because they will occupy a spot that other special infected can't replace if the boomer doesn't die. But what if in some alternate reality, the boomer wasn't just a comedically timed suicide bomber? Uh, no suicide boomers, please. What's up, Frickscope? What if the boomer was the most dangerous enemy in Left 4 Dead 2? Well, I wanted to find out, so I commissioned my friend Juris Patrick to make a Left 4 Dead 2 mutation called Boomer Apocalypse. We tried to create a mutation that would make the boomers so strong that were the only enemies that were necessary. In this apocalypse, there are only boomers. No hunters, jockeys, or even common infected. Just boomers. But, as we have established, boomers by themselves are really quite trivial. They can't do damage with their vomit or by exploding, and their scratching damage is very low. They instantly explode when shot because of their very small amount of HP and this leaves a red mist in their wake, but it's really more gross than anything. This is why we had to upgrade the boomer a bit. We have the technology, we can rebuild him. We, can rebuild him. we started by using the spite mutation as a base. This replaces the common affected spawns with tanks normally, but Patrick altered this to spawn boomers instead. Then he removed the cap on how many could exist at one time. That leaves the natural special spawn cap of 12. The way spite works normally is the tanks instantly respawn when killed, using common infected spawning locations and rules to do so. The same would apply to our boomers here. So, we have 12 boomers that instantly respawn when killed. So there should be about 10 boomers perpetually all the time, even if they're rapidly killed. But, they still don't have any way of doing damage. We changed that by doing something quite simple. When you are boomed on, you get a property called being it. When you are it, it causes a horde to spawn and they all go aggro on the it player. We just added a variable so that when someone gets the property it, they take 100 damage. Doing this causes the boomers to vomit and explode on you, instantly killing the player if that touches them. Once the mod was confirmed to be working and at least a little bit balanced, it was time for me to do what I do best. Time to speedrun through this and see if I could beat all 14 campaigns with this mutation. Yeah, so as you can see, Lots of boomers. I did the campaigns in the order that they appear in the campaign selection menu, starting with Dead Center and working my way down to the last stand. Right from the start, I knew I was not going to be needing a melee weapon. I need to make sure there's a big enough gap between the boomers and myself when they die, or I'll die when they do. So melee is out of the question. The first level on Dead Center has a pretty big skip where I strafe out of the window and land on the floor below. This lets me skip a bunch of narrow hallways to get right to the elevator. The fire on the ground floor I thought would help me because it would kill the boomers by itself. What I did not consider though is that I would have an insanely hard time seeing the boomers. And on Expert, they nearly instantly started vomiting. So they would puke on me from the other side of the fire before I could even see where they were. I pretty much immediately knew that Expert was going to be way too hard. Oh, they puke so fast on Expert. Okay, what if I switch to easy? If I switch to easy, can I just like bully all of them and just push them around. So I tried it once on easy and it was really pretty easy. At least this first attempt was. Excuse me. Excuse me. I found the go-to strat was to just push the fat people over. A little rude, but it looked hilarious and was super effective. The boomers took so long to react and vomit on me, I figured they were my teammates in CSGO. But in this time frame, I could walk up to them and punch them square in the face, stopping them from vomiting. 
This would stumble them, giving me ample time to just run past. I would have to melee each one individually, as them stumbling into each other does not cause a chain reaction, but it was simple in most instances to do so at least in these tight corridors. But because of these tight corridors, I assumed that Dead Center would be one of the hardest campaigns. With its narrow pathways, it's hard to know when a boomer might appear, and with nowhere to run, it's hard to kill them without getting hit by the explosion. But with this melee strategy, that was no longer a problem. Or at least that's what I thought. I had a discussion with chat and decided that we would go up to the advanced difficulty. Split the difference and go advanced, maybe? The thought was, if it was this easy on a level that's supposed to be one of the hardest in the run, then imagine how easy it would be on some of the others with wide open areas. So I soldiered on, and when I got to the fire, I just sprayed into the abyss. About 17 minutes in, and I finally completed the first map. This Dude, I'm gonna get fucking canceled for this challenge run. Nick just bat shaming the whole time. Let's go, we did it! <laughs> this next map, in theory, should be a lot easier because it's a ton of open spaces. Being able to see the boomers from far away should stop them from being able to sneak up on me and instantly kill me. Then the real problem emerged. Since they could spawn so close to you and instantly respawn, I would kill as many as I could with my main gun, and then I would simply run out of ammo and have to reload. When I reloaded, that's when they would go in for the kill. Ah! I'm out of ammo. This became an issue, as I would simply run out of ammo and then die in most instances. And with the game on advance, I could not get in close enough, fast enough, even when bunny hopping, to melee them before they could puke on me. With a bit of practice and some good luck, I was able to get to the cola section, but this is where I was going to have to give the homie his six pack so he opens the way forward, and this would be insanely difficult, because carrying the cola meant I couldn't have my gun out. To counter this, I had to throw the cola ahead and then re-grab it to throw it again when it was safe. But if I killed boomers too close to the cola, then the cola would just get launched into the sky a million miles away. I died here for almost another 30 minutes before I decided to just switch the difficulty to easy. We decided earlier to put it back to advanced because it might be way too easy on some of the other campaigns, but this one was basically unplayable. With it back on easy, it was still really hard, but I was able to make some progress. After a scary run to the safe room door, we finally make it to the Black Friday in America. POV, it's Black Friday, and you grabbed at the last PS5. Oh! Put the puke back in your mouth, sir. It was really hard to balance this mutation because there was no way to make the boomers do damage without having it instantly kill us. The way that the it property works is once you are it, you can just re-up on being it over and over again. So if you get vomited on, you're it for about 20 seconds, which means you are unable to take damage from being vomited on by a boomer for at least 20 seconds. And if in that 20 seconds you got vomited on again, it would not do damage, but it would re-up the timer. So actually, if we made the damage for the boomers be any less than 100, then you would get dropped down to like 1 HP or so, and then become basically invincible for the entire rest of the level. This level was kind of difficult, but it was much more open than some of the previous sections. I eventually made my way through and arrived at the finale in an hour and 10 minutes. Let's go, I did it! The other levels were difficult but this one was going to be hell. I'm a single survivor. The mutation turns off bots, and I have to pour eight gas cans without so much as getting boomer stink on me or I'll instantly die. Normally in a speedrun, you collect all of the cans and bring them to the spot to fill them up, then use an adrenaline to pour them quickly, reducing the chance that you die by minimizing the time spent pouring. But doing this was basically impossible. Just getting the cans to the car was already difficult in a normal speedrun. But here, if any boomer anywhere gets close enough to vomit on you, there is no counter. You can't even shoot them because you have the can in your hands. If you juggle the cans, then you can't shoot the boomers because they'll just launch the cans all over the place. Because of the way spite works, we still get tank spawns in the finales. It's on a timer for dead center. So if I don't finish the finale fast enough, not only do we have 12 boomers chasing us, but also a tank. I was hoping the boomer bile would distract the boomers if it was thrown at the tank, uh, but I was also hoping I would beat this challenge in one sitting. It seems both of these things were figments of my imagination. Over the next hour, I would get a few close calls. One time I even poured seven out of eight cans, and when trying to get back to pour the last one, I died of fall damage. Oh my god. There was no railing there. Oh, oh dude. 
I started seeing a lot more success when I stopped trying to juggle the cans of the car and just did them one at a time. I could actually kind of kite the boomers around the ball and give myself a brief window to pour a can or two. The problem is, this level is really vertical in nature, and boomers are known to literally jump to their death from the top rope like a WWE superstar. But it is quite difficult. I, it's just this one, it's this map, dude, but this explosion instantly kills me, so I have to be wary of flying meatballs. At 2 hours and 10 minutes, I finally beat the first campaign. Dead center. One of 14. Let's fucking go! <laughs> finally, dude. Get me out! That means that if things stay this difficult for the rest of the run, then I should be done in roughly 24 hours. Awesome. Unfortunately for me, things would only get more difficult in the next campaign, the passing. The passing is only three maps long, but maps two and three are torturous for this challenge. Like Dead Center, it has a can finale, but this one requires you to fill 10 cans instead of eight. Map two has a long underground section where you run through the sewers. Water in Left 4 Dead 2 slows you down, and that would make escaping the boomers way more difficult. I just barely outran boomers on normal ground, so in the water, I would definitely have to kill them. It was super essential that I got an adrenaline for this section too, as that negates the water slowdown. The first map I blew through easily. I beat it on my second attempt. Let's go, fastest clear of a map yet. I was unfortunately not able to get an adrenaline though, so I just had to settle for the combat shotgun. Thankfully, there are a lot of adrenaline spawns on map too, but in order to check them, I would have to go through lots of narrow corridors. Honestly though, narrow corridors are not nearly as scary for this mutation as drop downs are. Any section with multiple elevation changes is such a death trap. The midway point of this level has a staircase that leads down into the sewer. It's a five story decline or something like that, and these stairs are deadly. And not just for the thunder thighs on the boomers either. It's a really enclosed space and it makes me super anxious. I could fortunately shoot the boomers through the gaps in the stairs, but it was really hard to kill them before they got close enough to take me with them. These stairs are not just the end of it either. They drop off into the sewer where any number of boomers could be waiting for me. No! Oh, oh. Thankfully, I easily distract them by telling them that they could turn their retirement funds into gold. A few b-hops through some water to keep my speed and I make it to the two big water rooms. The first room isn't really that big of a deal because it's big open area, and I can just b-hop to keep my speed. As long as I hit every b-hop, then I don't have to worry about the water slowdown. But if I miss one, it's game over. Or, well, it wouldn't be if I didn't have a basically unlimited amount of sightline here. The second big water room is a bit different though. Right at the end of the upper pathway, there's a drop down full of boomers. Then the ceiling closes in, making it impossible to b-hop. This is why I need the adrenaline. You would think that after this, surely you would be free to go, but you would be sadly mistaken. At the end of this long hallway is a ladder followed by a staircase. This last ladder is so immensely scary. Anything can happen, even the comment of the day. Panic! Today's comment of the day comes from Patakeek2910. They say, since speedrunning is a competition, do any speedrunners have beef with one another? Or is the speedrunning community all friends? You know, it really depends on the community. I found that the bigger communities can have some drama and stuff, but most of the smaller core speedrunning communities are like 20 people total. So there really isn't much beef to be had. When it comes to speedrunning itself being competitive, yeah, of course, that's a huge part of speedrunning. And making friends and trying to beat those friends times is a lot of how the progression is made. It's really rare though that there is legit beef and people put in the time to beat someone's time simply because of that beef. Although that has happened. I remember one time there was someone who ran Dante Must Die in Devil May Cry 3 with Virgil and he was such a pompous asshole about it. He was saying how people who run normal are babies and can't get a good time and aren't actually good at the game and blah blah. This is someone who was obviously not really part of the community, as you might be able to guess. So I went ahead and grinded the category for about a week or two and completely annihilated his time just to spite him. But yeah, I mean, speedrunning is generally really friendly, and everyone just wants to support each other and get better. And sometimes that means creating fake beef with each other to drive competition. Great question. Make sure to leave comments on this video if you want me to potentially answer it in the next. After another hour of grinding it out, I finally made it through map 2, but this was just the beginning of this torture. Map 3 has you collect 10 gas cans and pour them. But unlike Dead Center, the place where you pour the cans is not out in the open. There are many close by walls and doorways. This is scary because the boomers could spawn behind these walls while I'm trying to pour the cans, and then boom me before I'm even done with one pour. On top of that, this campaign normally has three bot survivors, 
that are by the pouring spot and protect you while you pour. But Patrick has trolled me and removed them. Thanks, Patrick. I think he took away the other survivors too. Yeah. They're not here. That's not good. By the time I pour four cans or so, the tank would start to spawn. This actually makes the challenge slightly easier because the common infected limit when a tank is around is actually lowered. So there should be less boomers. That's not to say that there wasn't enough of them though. Even right at the start of the level, boomers would swarm me, make it impossible to get out of the elevator sometimes. Oh, I was distracted. Yeah, thanks for the nine months at X. Every time I killed one, cans would go flying. This was gonna be a mess. I eventually started to get the bit of a groove though, learning where the boomers would spawn and roughly when. Then I would kite the tank around and use the boomers to stun it so I could kill it quickly and easily. Pouring the cans was by far the hardest part. I could get a bunch of them over there quickly and easily, but the boomers would be coming at me from all angles, making it near impossible to kill them all in time. It was like Kovac's aim trainer, except for it looked like I was taking place in a retirement home. It took me so much mental energy and dedication to get these cans in that generator that I legit zoned out for a long time. Pure focus mode. I focused so hard that I forgot that the level doesn't even end after pouring all 10 of the cans. So when I finally did, I just sort of blanked and then died instantly after. I forgot you have to climb the thing afterwards. So, you know, I have to run to the car after pouring the cans. I totally forgot. My dumbass just stood there and died. At least I knew I could do it at that point. Even if my chat didn't believe in me. Someone in my chat bet me 200 bucks that I couldn't finish this campaign in the next two hours. So I took him up on it and immediately finished the campaign on that attempt. All I needed was a little financial compensation. I am a greedy bastard after all. Finish this challenge within Two hours, I'll donate a hundred bucks. No pressure. Woo! I'm coming, baby! Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Speaking of greedy, this mutation is actually available for you to play on my Patreon. I recently revamped the place and it's got videos and download links to all the mods I use for these videos. These Left 4 Dead 2 mutations in particular are only available on there, at least until Patrick stops being a lazy asshole and puts them on the workshop. But if you don't want to wait for that day that may never come, you can support me for as little as $3 to get video tutorials and download links for all the mods I use in my videos. If you're on the $5 tier, then you also get a bi-weekly podcast of my rants that I go on during these challenge runs and your name at the end of my videos. Anyways, the dude said he got scammed, so he didn't pay up. So I was the one that got scammed, I guess. That's fine though, because just getting through the level was payment enough. Finally, things would start to get a bit easier. Dark Carnival was the next campaign, and honestly, this is what the zombie apocalypse would look like if it just took place on an American fairground. No mutation required. The first map was really simple. I beat it on the second try, just bunny hopping my way to glory. XD. Even though this is much easier than the prior two campaigns, the fact that you could die in one touch makes every map scary. Even the slightest mistake could mean that you have to redo the entire level over again. And on longer levels, that makes them terrifying. There is a reprieve from this non-stop terror though, and that's all the Evangelion references around the carnival. I love when they do the little Elv Evangelion pose, their legs are sticking up. Coaster was going to be the hardest part of this campaign by far, and that's because of the Swan Maintenance Room of Love. This tunnel is full of boomers and tight corridors. There's even one-way dropdowns. I used a Molotov to kill the boomers below so they didn't have a chance to stop me. I also discovered a brand new strategy. If there is a bunch of boomers, you can just shoot one of them and they'll all stumble. This should give you enough time to close the gap and run past, or melee them to re-stumble. This is important because the instant respawn timer. Instead of dying and then respawning in front of you, causing a never-ending cycle of pain, we can stun them and then run past, delaying the respawn a bit longer by keeping them alive until the game deems that you're too far ahead and despawns them. Did I just shoot one have them all stun? Five head? Oh. Except for the one that didn't stun and killed me. The next map, Barnes, I do first try, even if it was really scary. No! Oh. Ah, let's go, first try. Bitch. Bitch! Bitch! Mm. For the finale, we just have to deal with a bunch of boomers, spawns, and then a tank. I had a great idea though. What if I just stood on top of the scaffold thing? There is an unlimited amount of sniper ammo up here, and the boomers will all spawn far away where I could see them, giving them absolutely no shot of killing me. 
Like the last Springle at the bottom of the tube, I was out of reach and therefore safe from the fatties. Bing Shiling. Nice. The first two campaigns took two hours each. Dark Carnival on the same settings was done in 30 minutes. Let's just say that this run was back on track. It would get even faster too, as I would beat Swamp Fever maps 1, 2, and 3 on my very first attempt, only dying to the finale because I couldn't find the gun pile. I found a boomer. Literally, where are the guns? I have no idea. Normally in speedruns, we basically never play on the newest version of the game, and even when we do, we stay in god spots to make it easier. But I wasn't doing that here because it would be unsafe. The boomers could fall on top of my head while in it, so it was just easier to kill them all with the sniper. I finished the fourth campaign in about five and a half hours, and that was all the time I had to play for the day, so rip the one-shot dream. The next day I came back, and this would be a victory lap compared to the first day. Let's blow through this thing. With 10 campaigns left, surely I could beat the rest in one sitting. Hard Raid was next on the list, but much like the boomer's nickname Tiny, this was an ironic nickname. The only hard part of the campaign was waiting for the elevator in map 2. But I had a genius idea of just running away. Then I used a Molotov at the bottom of the elevator to stop boomers from trapping me in there. The rest of the campaign is really straightforward, just managing adrenaline spawns to make sure I'm able to run through the water on my way back. For the finale, I just stood on the roof and blasted away. Then I got away, but the tank bounced my face off the wall of the boat and I got boomed on inches before completing the level. Uh oh, no. Bruh. The next campaign was The Parish, and normally this is one of the hardest campaigns. That's because of the level design. Lots of narrow passageways and zigzagging within them. The special infected could climb over these walls, making it never really possible to truly outrun them. The same could not be said for the boomers though. Because of their slow movement speed, they really couldn't catch up even when climbing over the walls. On top of that, I started getting really good at predicting their movement. Parish has lots of thin walls, and with boomers dying so quickly, I could easily just shoot them right through them. The walls are also blocking the explosion from hitting me, so it made it much safer to kill them this way. I would pre-fire through nearly every wall and almost always get a kill, making the narrow passageways much safer. That is, except for quarter. For whatever reason, no matter what challenge you're doing, whether it's all jockeys, all boomers, or even normal speedruns, this level is always ass and takes several years off my life every time I play it. Ah! Aw, damn it. What? Once we escape from the parish, we arrive at the sacrifice, and this DLC campaign has a long first level, where you're required to kill a tank. This wouldn't be so bad except for that right after you kill the tank, there is a huge danger zone for boomers. Tons of train cars serve as a great cover for the only special infected to not know how to use a smartphone. This is such a bad spot for boomers. Oh my god. No. The finale is similar to the passing, but thank god it's not a gas can finale. You just have to throw three generators, then climb to the top of the bridge. I could actually start all three generators really easily without dying to the boomers. It's the multiple tanks alongside the boomers after the generators are started that were the problem. Once I got to the bridge, I had to jump down and start the final generator. This is when I got ass blasted by a flying car thanks to the tank. No! After redoing the whole finale, I come out the other end and into No Mercy at about 7 hours. No Mercy is really straightforward. During the finale, I found a spot where the boomers would only come at me from the top of this building, so I could really easily snipe them with no risk at all. Then I grief on the way to the rescue vehicle. I'm starting to notice a trend here. That's called griefing. Next is Crash Course, and nothing of interest happens here basically, except for I pet my cat Oreo. Oreo. Hello, Oreo. I kind of need that desk space, you know. Oh, do not nudge my hand. Please. 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 She meleeed. That was her that did that. This is a two-player run now. Death Toll is next, and it's just a lot more killing boomers, as you get to guess. As far as this mutation is, it's often just boiling down to shooting a lot of boomers. For the finale, I hid in the water and just shot them from afar. Dead air went pretty well, only a few deaths. Blood harvest would be surprisingly difficult considering how open the level is, but this stemmed from it being in the fucking forest, as I could not see the boomers through the trees, like ever. They're in the trees, man! They're in the goddamn trees! This map sucks, I can't see anything. Feels like I'm playing Coldstream. Coldstream has the same problem on the first two levels at least. Just insane tree interference. Speaking of tree interference, at about 9 hours we arrive at the final campaign, The Last Stand. And the whole campaign has trees everywhere. On top of that, it's dark as hell, so visibility is at an all-time low. 
The first map is long, but it's not too difficult. I beat it pretty quickly, but I had forgotten the worst thing of all. I had forgotten that the last stand has a can pouring part of the finale. So on top of the low visibility due to the trees and darkness, you also have to pour six gas cans. This was impossible. I, there's no way for me to know where they are, you know? I, I can't know where they are. It's impossible. And was by far the hardest part of the run. Nearly 10 hours in and I just wanted to finish this godforsaken challenge. The area where you pour the cans is super dangerous. The boomers could come in from almost any angle and it's really hard to see them because of the trees. I died here so many times. I was so close yet so far from the end. After about two hours, I finally managed to do it. I beat all 14 campaigns while boomers were the hardest enemy in the game. <laughs> Fuck that boomer. <laughs> Let's go, we did it. Sub 11 hours. <laughs> it was really fun. The game was completely different than normal gameplay. It felt closer to Red Light, Green Light than Left 4 Dead. And honestly, my favorite part was balancing the mod with Patrick. Sitting in the Discord trying to figure out how to balance the boomers so that they're actually challenging while still making it possible to beat. In the future, expect similar mutations for all of the other specials. The mutation in this video will be available on the workshop eventually, but until then you can get it on my Patreon. Until then, Thanks for watching and stay stylish.